also to my YouTube channel. It is 28 degrees just outside of Austin, Texas this morning, and I have been thinking about our upcoming Caribbean cruise, and I thought maybe you'd want to think about it with me. The last time I produced a video series for my YouTube channel was five years ago when I was expecting my second and last child, and we've been pretty busy since then. So now it seems like I probably have time to try again to get our YouTube channel active. So I hope you'll stay along with us because in this series, we plan to discuss in this video why cruising at all and how we chose a cruise line. And in later videos, we will talk about packing, planning, getting to the port. We will have footage from our actual trip, from traveling and all the ports that we visit. And while this is nothing that is original. You can find a ton of this stuff on YouTube. If you're like me, it's really fun to watch everyone and to think and plan and get ready to have a good time. So I hope you'll stay with us. Question number one, why go on a cruise? For us, it's a great budget-friendly, all-inclusive option. And this is cruise line dependent, but if you have a family that includes a small child or a teenager, then this offers something for everyone. Everyone's going to have something to enjoy. Again, there are some cruise lines that are better at children's programming than others, but we'll go into that when we talk about which cruise line to pick. But if you like to travel on a budget, which I do, then it's really easy to plan ahead and say, this is how much it's going to cost. Now, you do have to pay for everything up front, so when you come home, you don't have a big debt unless you just spend a whole lot of money on board, but as long as you don't, it's all paid for. You do need to keep in mind that there will be gratuities for your stateroom attendant and your servers in the dining room and their bosses um, that, depending on the cruise line, range from about $14 to $20 per day per person, and once you've done that, then everything's paid for. And... Another thing is because I like to be organized and like to unpack when we get to a hotel, a cruise is a great way to see a bunch of different places, but not have to unpack and pack, which is the worst part of traveling. I, I can get excited about packing before we leave, but once we're there, packing again is just no fun. So this way, you may go to Key West and then Cuba and then Mexico, but you have stayed in the same room and haven't had to unpack anything. Or, you know, you can go up the Northeast, you can go through the Mediterranean, you get to see all these great places, and you don't have to drive. You sleep, and you wake up, and you're in a new place, and it's pretty magical. A cruise is also a great mix. If you have a group of people who, like my family, include people who are just happy reading a book all day, and people like me who want to be out and seeing things and doing things, you can do a lot or a little or nothing or find a really nice balance. Tons to do. You can't do everything, but you can choose to do nothing if that's what you want to do. Another reason that I like cruising is just for the visuals. As you know, uh, if you go visit the mountains, there is nothing like sunrise over the mountains or to see um, the sky reflected in a mountain lake. The same thing if you go to the beach. There's just something about palm trees and that smell, and there's just everywhere you go, you have the opportunity of experiencing new aesthetics. And so if you so desire to go stargazing, you get away from the main decks, it is amazing how many stars you can see. It's just beautiful. Some people have questions about cruising, like, will I be bored? the same place every day, and hopefully I've already answered that, but wherever you cruise every day, they have a schedule that comes out for the next day. Usually when you come back to your room at night and turn down services happen, there will be an itinerary for the next day. You can go through and see, and there may be karaoke, or there may be um, napkin folding, or there may be a um, family scavenger hunt, or a belly flop contest, or the World Texas Man contest, or any kind of cooking classes or tutorials. Um, plus then there's the pools and there's the shows and you're not gonna be bored. There's plenty to do. One of my favorite things to do is just to walk around. I will try to think, oh, is there anything on the ship that I haven't seen yet? 
and walk around until I find something new. And we've had a lot of fun doing that and accidentally stumbling upon the anchor when it was in storage and things like that. It's pretty cool. Another thing some people worry about is the seasickness and you might get seasick. I never have and I'm very motion sensitive. I cannot sit in the back seat of a car. I can't read in the car. Uh, I think I threw up on my mom one time when I was riding in her lap backwards in a car. This was in the 70s and we could do that then. So I've never gotten seasick on a cruise. My ex-husband did once but they were really choppy waters and he went to watch Pirates of the Caribbean in the big movie theater. So while our ship was rocking, he was also watching waves and rocking that weren't uh, synced with what his body was feeling and he got sick, which is not to say you won't get sick, but a lot of people swear by sea bands. I've gotten in this time. My husband has been on a submarine, but not a ship. So we don't know how he'll react. And uh, there are ways to, you can take meclizine, you can try to prevent, stay ahead of it if you think that you're prone to be seasick. But the first cruise we went on, I took a lot of stuff and didn't need anything. So you may not either. And I think another thing people worry about is sort of the nightmare stories that you hear on cruise lines about, I don't know, people disappearing or them having an emergency and running out of food and it's chaos or rogue waves or whatever. And the reason you hear about those things is the same reasons that you hear about plane malfunctions uh, is because they are rare. Hundreds of thousands of people go on cruises and things of that dramatic nature just don't happen very often. That said, anytime you leave your house, you're taking your chances. Life happens, but being on a cruise is no more... Uh, you're not destined to suffer the same fate that the Titanic did, even if it gets pretty bad. Uh, we've come a long way since then, and you're probably going to be fine. So let's say now you're on board. We're going to go on a cruise. It's all-inclusive. My food, my lodging, the ports of call. It's a great deal. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a great time. I'm not worried about unlikely disaster scenarios. So we're on board now. How do you choose... A cruise line. This is where a travel agent can really help you. Travel agents know all the different lines that are available and they can help you pick what's best for you and your travel companions. I actually got a brochure yesterday for a travel company called Olivia that offers female only vacations including cruises so if that's important to you you could ask about that. For me and for my family we have picked Royal Caribbean. My parents took us on our first cruise and it was a Disney cruise with my six-year-old, and it was great. It was such a fabulous introduction to cruising. But if people tell you that once you've cruised Disney with kids, it ruins you for other cruise lines, don't worry. That's not the case. The second cruise I took, we were paying for, and so we chose Royal Caribbean. And my then eight-year-old actually preferred Royal Caribbean's children's program to Disney's, mostly because it was much less structured. There were fewer children. And so the kids program wasn't as much everybody sit down and do this fun thing. It was more, oh, what are you guys doing over there? That looks fun. In fact, one time Dee was one of only three or four kids in there and was climbing up a, um, a structural pole in the middle of the room. And so one of the counselors was like, oh, okay, we're going to have a contest. We're going to have you guys climb up and see you can hold on longest. And I think Dee got Royal Caribbean medal for that and just loved it. They were very attentive. Uh, I think that you're going to find any cruise line where there is a children's program, they're going to have very professional young people dealing with your children, and you're not going to have to worry about it. Uh, if you don't have kids and you don't want to be around kids, then there are certainly other cruise lines that are probably better for you. Uh, my parents, I think they have done a whole lot of cruise lines, including Princess, Royal Caribbean, Disney. I think that they are just partial to Holland America. So that's their cruise line. For us... Royal Caribbean meets the criteria of, number one, having a good kids program because we have a four-year-old, uh, being close enough to drive, which helps with the budget. It's also not an expensive cruise line. I was archiving a bunch of pictures recently and found my paperwork for our 2010, January 2010 cruise. That was two adults, 
and a child in an inside room. Our next cruise is in April 2019, two adults, one child, on a bigger ship. The first cruise we took was on Navigator of the Seas. This one is on Liberty of the Seas, which is a, a class up, a class bigger. And this time we have a, an outside room, a balcony. And looking at my paperwork from then and my paperwork from now, our cost for this cruise nine and a half years later with an outside room and a ship with more amenities is only $200 more. It was about $2,000 the first time and it's $2,200 this time. So over the years, as ships have gotten bigger and as uh, more ships have come out and there are more and more options, the price has gone down. And I guess actually now that I think about it, having adequate kids programming and being moderately priced and close enough to drive, which plays into both the budget thing and the fact that my kid doesn't want to fly anywhere. And frankly, I don't really want to fly anywhere before I go on a cruise. That's it for this time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Next time, I'm going to talk about some prep things in terms of planning and getting myself excited and little surprises for the family. So I hope that you'll stay tuned and we'll see you on episode two. Bye.